This is the Slasher Tower, and this is the Gladiator Tower. Notice any similarity? Although most towers in TDS do feel very distinct, some feel more like upgraded variants of the same concept. So I tried using the basic and advanced versions of these loadouts to see which towers are actually better. The first of which include two towers with upgrade variants in Hunter and Ace Pilot. Ace Pilot has a very similar competitor to it in Pursuit. Both the aerial vehicles with explosive abilities and the same color palette, their strengths differ pretty drastically, as shown in this first game. Ace Pilot it continuously shoots and flies in a circle. It could only hit the zombies for a brief amount of time, but did solid damage. So for the early game, I just placed a couple near the front of the path. The tower also gets bombs on only its second level. Very nice for crowd control. I then placed a hunter, another tower with a variant. It's a cheap source of hidden detection, unlike Ace Pilot. But other than that, it doesn't really have a lot going for it, unlike the other version. By saving money from my farms, I was able to fully upgrade an Ace Pilot before the fallen zombies arrive. The tower's damage gets extremely high at this point, enough to kill any zombie. Well, it's in range, but surely that won't be a problem later. And for now, the planes killed the fallen zombies with their 180 HP. In the mid game, I started to place many towers, mainly ace pilots, plus with a few more hunters. The slow boss was the ideal target due to how slow it moves, and I killed them easily. However, there was a problem. The tank on wave 30, which I knew would be very fast. I fully upgraded a few more hunters for their consistency, but I knew their damage wouldn't be good enough to carry. So I just had to hope that with 6 fully upgraded planes, I would just barely be able to kill the tank. But speed was the issue, as it constantly outran the ace pilot's range, and it ended up killing me on its debut wave, meaning I had to upgrade this loadout. I replaced ace pilot with pursuit and hunter with archer, also equipping some support towers for good measure. Pursuit is definitely the advanced version of ace pilot, the original tower only costing 1500 coins, and the pursuit unlock requiring you to reach a level 100, making it about 100 times harder to get, so surely it's about 100 times better, right? Meanwhile archer is a different spin on hunter's concept, using a literal bow and arrow. The main draw of this tower is its piercing ability, which I hoped would carry me in the early game while I saved. Unfortunately, although Archer is definitely stronger than Hunter, it's still kind of bad. It doesn't get piercing until level 3, and when it does, it needs a perfect lineup to actually work, and this guy is not a great shot. So with the Archer struggling, I had to pin my hopes on Pursuit, which I got enough money to place in wave 10. The main difference between the helicopter and the plane is that Pursuit will not constantly rotate, and instead target zombies. Unfortunately, this is just as inconsistent as Ace Pilot, since the tower might just set zombies by while focused on a boss. Initially, Pursuit is proportionately much more expensive. The run was going poorly, so I placed a DJ and then Commander for the buffs. However, disaster struck in wave 25, as the glitches spawned. These zombies were too fast for the archers to chain their piercing through, or for the pursuits to lock onto the front runners, letting a large chain of them by, causing me to lose. Proving that the advanced versions of towers aren't always superior, but I'm pretty sure things will be better for the Slasher and Gladiator. Both are towers with a similar role of early game defense, however Slasher is not quite as good. It costs slightly more and takes slightly more space, and its damage is pretty mediocre, even at its final upgrades. The one gimmick it has going for it is its knife throw ability, allowing it to double as a ranged tower in addition to a melee one. However, this knife throw's use is limited, and it doesn't really excel in either department, mainly because of what it doesn't have. In this case, Gladiator is a pretty clear upgrade. It's very strong in the early game, being cheap to place an upgrade, and importantly, has piercing on its strikes, giving it much stronger crowd control and slasher. It also gains a warrior's call ability on later levels, a generally more useful ability than slashers. To see the difference between the two, I decided to solo with each tower on its own. Although Gladiator is more suited to being a supportive tower, it still performed well, only losing to the mid-game fallens, whereas Slasher started struggling pretty early on, and I had to place multiple backups in the rear of the map. I do think Slasher is a bit underrated, but Gladiator is still the better tower. One of the most intense power jumps comes with the Sniper Tower. Unlocked from level 0, this tower itself doesn't seem particularly strong, with a very low fire rate and average damage. However, it does have a few positive traits, such as its cheap cost, massive range, and the potential for cliff stacking, meaning that despite being one of the literal starter towers, it does have some niche use, and it is possible to use it to get pretty far in the fallen game. However, the evolution of Sniper's design is definitely Ranger, over 10 times more expensive to place with much higher DPS and a more futuristic design. It's a staple of the game, and improves Sniper's concept by now giving it enough DPS to actually be useful in harder game modes, like Hardcore Mode, where I originally used this tower to grind for Accelerator, although it has kind of fallen off. But even good loadouts can be upgraded in TDS by using the very best of the available towers. For example, this team is fairly good on its own. Cowboy can generate money, and Bin Gunner and Crook Boss are solid DPS options, supported by the last two towers. So you might think this can't get much better. But putting it to test on Fallen, at first things went well. Cowboy does okay, and there's plenty of money. And Electroshocker's support lets me kill the early bosses. The trouble started around wave 15 with the mystery zombies, which spawned three bosses. I did place Minigunner, however, with no gold. 
old perk, its damage wasn't that great. Going into wave 20, I was very worried about the fallen zombies, and they did pass the bulk of my towers, but luckily, the zombies glitched out and got stuck in the corner. Or so I thought until I lost. I don't know exactly what happened, but clearly this team is cursed. However, this loadout can be fully upgraded. Each tower has its role replaced by an effectively better variant, with higher DPS, better economy, more damage centric support, and the improved stuns. So I took this team into the same game mode to see if I could beat the previous loadout's record. I again passed through the early game with little trouble, as the crooks easily killed the mysteries thanks to the better support of Warden and Commander. Some fallen zombies did get past, but crook bosses spawned bodyguards were able to damage them enough for me to survive. The glitches on wave 25 weren't much of a problem, and the biggest threat, the tank on wave 30, died very quickly, getting stun locked heavily by Warden's stuns, and being laser damned by Accelerator with the helping crook boss, who at this point in the game had spawned a massive horde of its own agents. However, things started to shift around wave 35, and moving into the final oh, waves, no. I was struggling no, thoroughly, better, as my farming wasn't exactly optimal and my accelerators weren't fully upgraded, leading me to get overwhelmed, and although I did make it 17 waves further, I'm at the same end as the unupgraded version of the slowdown. There are also some more loosely connected towers with powered up versions, such as this slowdown, which has Demo Man, a pretty standard beginner tower noble for its splash damage. However, the improved version of this tower is present in Mortar. The level 75 experience reward this tower is similarly cheap, but with a much larger range and more versatility due to being a cliff tower, or the Paintballer, another unassuming and easily unlocked tower. It's not very good and only really has some niche use, with no special effects to its projectiles. In the upgraded loadout, I can bring Toxigunner, another tower focused on shooting goopy substances, however much least superior in the fact they can actually debuff the zombies it hits. Despite the fact that they're both more so supportive towers, I brought the two of them in an upgraded loadout to Fallen mode, where I survived fairly handily, as Mortar's splash damage could take out large waves, helped by Toxigunner's slowing. Bosses were a struggle with their high health and singular nature, but even so, I did manage to chip down or even kill some of them, thanking the rest. With this loadout alone, I was able to make it to wave 14, and I could have gone farther, except neither tower could detect hidden. One area where both versions of the loadout would struggle. Honestly, the possibilities are vast, and I want to speedrun some upgrades. Any tower with a golden skin can instantly be upgraded, become a lot stronger, if you're willing to grind for unholy hours. But even some emotes can be upgraded, which is most apparent in some of the Halloween emotes. The torch is the lowest tier, with a basic prop and no animation, but that can be upgraded to the candy throw, which can then be maxed out with the cauldron emote, with yet another new animation and a very unique accessory. And of course, you can literally upgrade the rotational battle passes to get cool skins like an underpaid intern, or you can even upgrade towers with developer-only variants, like the military base to mecha base, a massive upgrade taking a basic tower to an overpowered one. If you want to see a full video on that and other rare towers, consider subscribing and leaving a like. These videos take a long time to make, and I would really appreciate it.